So uh, we'll move on to the next part. I did realize that in the previous video, I forgot to actually answer the question that was asked in problem one, which was the minimum number of different values needed for the preprocessor macros. And I think the point of the question is um, that, well, you know, three of these are set to the value three. So we could get rid of two of them, right? If we just uh, went through the program and replaced V1 and V3 with V0, then there would be no change in the behavior of the program. And that's kind of uh, uh, straightforward. Um, but then there's this V2. And the question is, could we get rid of V2? Well, where is V2 used? It's used down here. And it's in the condition for an if. And so I think the point here is that um, in C, when you use Booleans for ifs and, and, and stuff like that, uh, it it just treats zero as falsy, so to speak, it, right? If, if this were the value zero, it would be treated like false and we would go to the else case. It treats everything other than zero as truthy. And that's why since it says, you know, this is like saying if one, and because one is treated as truthy, then we go into this line of code. And so if we replaced V2 with V0, it would be the same behavior because uh, three would also get treated as truthy. And so would any other uh, non-zero number. And so in fact, right, so when it asks what's the least number of these things that we could use, well, the, um, uh, the answer is one, right? If we just replaced all of those preprocessor macros with um, uh, with just V0, it would have the same behavior. So, okay, I think that's the point for the previous problem. So now let's get into exercise number two, dealing with the C debugger. And so, yeah, uh, in the right uh, directory, uh, let's say GCC, G O. Hello, hello.c. So we're just compiling. Nothing went wrong. Great. Now we say cgdb and hello. Now you'll need the GDB, cgdb uh, uh, you know, library or whatever. And uh, so if you don't have it, then you can do uh, sudo apt get install uh, cgdb. But since I already have it, then I can do that. It takes me into here. I can just press enter and then maybe press enter one more time. Oops. What am I, what am I missing? It's just giving a bunch of warnings. Okay, anyway. So, um, <coughs> So let's see what we're supposed to do here. How do you pass command line arguments to a program when using GDB? So that would just be run and then you pass the argument. So arg1, arg2, and uh, run is how you uh, get the debugger to start walking you through the code. Uh, now that would be how you pass command line arguments, but you're not gonna be able to tell that I did that if it just runs all the way through the program and quits. So we need to set a breakpoint so that at some point I can have it sort of like paused in the middle of the program run, and then I can show you that the args were successfully passed in. So uh, how do I set breakpoints? Well, let's just set a breakpoint at 13. Oops, B space 13. Now, I said line 13, it made it line 14. It's not too mysterious, I think, because 13 is a blank line. So it naturally pushed my line over to a fairly reasonable uh, uh, line number. And so um, anyway, uh, now I can go ahead and say run arg1, arg2, and let's uh, do that. It went ahead, broke at line 14, so you can see, you know, uh, breakpoint one, because I only had one break, one breakpoints, but it went to the first one. And on line 14, which has this code, it broke. It'd be nice to print out some information. So if I print at this point, the content of variable i, that makes good sense. It's saying that uh, the content of uh, variable i is 13. Let's think about what's going on here. We declare i, um, 
And then we iterate up to the string length of this stir object. Well, that stir object, I believe, has length uh, 13. And so if you, uh, you know, so it's going to like increment and increment i until i equals the string length, which is 13. That's when it breaks, does not run anymore. And that's when we reach this line where we have a breakpoint and I'm printing the value of i, which is 13. So I think that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, what, oh, right. And so I wanted to show what info args, I think. Right, that's great. Um, does that make sense? I said args, uh, or arg1, arg2, and it's saying args c, which, right, arg c is the count of the arguments, uh, says that there were three. Um, and then this is telling you the address in memory where uh, you can find the, the first argument value. Um, why does it say three rather than, for instance, uh, two, as I would have guessed? Let's quit out of this. Let's do this again. Let's say uh, break. Uh, maybe while I'm doing this, right? So I am curious to uh, to try it with a different no number of arguments and see how things change. But um, but let's see if the, uh, right. So this is kind of interesting, right? we want to be able to break only when a certain condition occurs. So like in this program, I think the main interesting way to do that would be to write a condition for when I